Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. I love doing videos like this uh, because it is these videos are generated from comments that you've made, questions that you've asked on other videos I put together. And what it does is it makes me think about the reasons why I do things. Now I've been maintaining uh, aquariums for a very long time and a lot of the stuff I do, I do because, well, I've done it for a very long time and it's always worked, so why not continue? But when you ask questions and you leave comments uh, such as you have, it makes actually me actually actively think about uh, the reasons why I do things. So I'm going to try and answer the questions involving this particular filter and what I'm going to do with it. Because some people ask, am I going to just rinse it out with water? Am I going to wash it out with soap? Am I going to try and sterilize it to get rid of that algae? Uh, questions along those lines. Now, before I get into that though, uh, there was another comment I got recently regarding this as to why don't I just uh, gravel vacuum it out and see, because this is just an experiment, uh, see how that affects things. And the reason why I'm not going to go that route uh, is a, a fewfold. Now, first off, I decided I want the extra space in this tank, so I'm going to go a different route. Uh, but also, because there is lava rock in here as well as gravel, uh, it'd be almost impossible to gravel vacuum this. And even if it was just all gravel, It'd be almost impossible to get a gravel vacuum to go all the way to the bottom because it's an awful lot of material and also it's very close to the surface of the water and it would be very difficult to get a gravel vacuum to function properly in that. So that's the reasons why I'm not going to do that. Uh, now as far as what I would do uh, regarding cleaning this, let's say I was going to keep this going. I would not sterilize it. Now I know the algae in there, it's not a healthy algae and it shows signs of uh, you know chemistry going in the wrong direction, but <clears throat> it is a useful indicator. And even if I could eradicate it, which I can't because I have a large fish room and it's pretty much everywhere, and uh, that kind of algae is quite resilient. I mean if you have one aquarium or uh, possibly two, you could probably get rid of something along those lines, uh, but it will come in in the fish's guts and on plants and stuff anyway. So it's really a, kind of a pointless venture trying to get rid of them. Uh, but again, like I said, even though it is something that is not uh, desirable, it only shows up when things are going the wrong way. And I love it as an indicator because it's telling me that the flow through that filter is not proper and something needs to be done about it. And that's one of the reasons why I really uh, don't try to sterilize things. Besides the fact, like I said, it's almost impossible. So what I would do if I were keeping this is I would uh, obviously just take the whole thing out of the aquarium. Uh, I would dump it out and lightly rinse it. And believe it or not, just in tap water. I know I've uh, put uh, videos up before and you've seen lots of videos about people saying, um, well, rinse it out in tank water. And I often do that. Uh, this is just a bit too big for that, so I wouldn't really uh, try. But I have uh, put together videos, or sorry, I put together experiments and did videos about them, uh, comparing rinsing a filter in tank water versus rinsing in uh, a tap water. And I don't really find that much of a difference. On, on the whole, if it was a small filter, I would just rinse it in uh, the water I'm taking out of the tank for a water change anyway, uh, just because it's convenient and if there is a minute difference between the two, there's no real point in disturbing the filter too much. So what I would do is I would just dump this into a bucket, uh, slosh it around with some water for a little bit, uh, nothing too extravagant because I don't want to take out all the mulm. Uh, it's a very you know, beneficial thing in certain quantities, so I would rinse it out roughly, uh, get rid of the bulk put it all back together the way it was. And if I was, you know, going to be doing videos about the tank, I would clean the standpipes. Otherwise I would just leave them alone. The other thing I'll do is of course, make sure that the rigid airline tubing, uh, little holes in them are clear and that's it. I put it back together, put it in the aquarium, uh, turn it on and it'll obviously uh, put a little bit of mulm into the water and cloud the water in the tank a little bit. I would do a water change at that point and that's it it would be done that's that would be my process for cleaning something this size uh, in other words nothing too extravagant just rinse it all out uh, might have a bit of difficulty re-layering because I, like i said there is some lava rock in here as well 
and uh, it's kind of hard to separate it a little bit. Again, not really a big deal. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what kind of order it's in, whether there's tons of uh, gravel on top or lava rock on the bottom. Uh, it's It really just doesn't matter. And the reason why, as you can see when I was showing close up to this filter, uh, you can't really tell that there's lava rock in there because the gravel just sort of settles down all around it and uh, that's it. You, you know, like I said, you don't really know uh, that it's present. It is there, it is very porous, and it's very beneficial. I actually prefer the mix to just straight lava rock, but that's just my preference. I know uh, lots of people uh, will use just straight lava rock. I know uh, Jack and Dan use a lot of lava rock, uh, just like I said, just lava rock in their gravel, under gravel filters, and they're having no issues whatsoever. Again, it's just like I said, just a personal preference, so uh, not really a big deal one way or another. So there you go, that's what I would do. And as far as, like I said, sterilizing things, I don't. Uh, I don't believe in it, unless, of course, you've come across uh, a pathogen on a fish that you've uh, introduced into your aquariums, and please quarantine. <laughs> And quarantine for quite a while. Make sure that um, they're healthy before you put them into the general population of your fish tanks. Now, this is one thing that I've done. Uh, it might be a little bit excessive, but when it came to a certain fish I would pick up, I wouldn't ever actually add the adults into any of my tanks. What I would do instead is um, have, give them in their, like a really good-sized uh, quarantine tank uh, make sure they're raised healthy and everything, and then I would spawn them, and then I would put their those babies of those fish into my systems, and never actually in include the adults. I know that's a little bit much, uh, and I only did it for I think two different species. One was wild caught, and looked a little rough, and the other was guppies. Uh, for some reason, guppies uh, can have some issues uh, depending on where you get them from. And sometimes it's just, of course, their metabolisms. Um, but anyway, I did that for guppies. And if I were to pick up more to change the bloodline a little bit every now and then, I would definitely not put any adults into my population. I would definitely put in only the babies. So anyway, that's it. <laughs> that takes care of, I think, all the questions you guys asked about this. Uh, let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And I'll try and answer those on Sunday's vlog. And that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. Definitely leave comments. I truly enjoy them. And uh, it's a great way of getting feedback and putting together videos that you guys want to see. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And bye for now.